most people are taught how to drive a car. We, most people are not taught how to drive their nervous system. And so a lot of what I'm talking about here is just one language, one version mm -hmm. of the language of how to drive and control your nervous system. And you can't drive your nervous system with thoughts and controlling your mind alone. You have to connect the whole vehicle is what I'm hearing. You can't just steer thoughts. You need to also use the brakes or also right. use different levers, which is the entire car. That's right. It's, it's very hard to control the mind with the mind. It can be done. There are people that are, get better at that. Right, maybe it's but, a practice over time. But, but using, I say, when in moments of stress, either excessively alert stress or excessively fatigued stress, look to the body because mm. there are mechanisms that have been built into the body for hundreds of <laughs> thousands of years yeah. designed to do this. Now, the reason I can say that is that the physiological side, the double inhale, exhale, is controlled by a specific set of neurons in the brainstem that Jack Feldman's lab discovered. When children or adults have been sobbing very hard, or when they're out of air in a claustrophobic environment, <laughs> they naturally do that yeah. to reopen these little sacs in the uh -huh. lungs. Now, inhale emphasized breathing can be practiced in a way, sort of away from stress in a kind of offline approach that can be beneficial for raising what we call stress threshold. So there's a whole other way to look at stress, which is to say, how do I get calmer <clears throat> in the mind when my body is freaking out? There you go. And, uh, I think people will recognize some of what I'm about to describe as kind of Wim Hof-like breathing. Mm -hmm. It has also traditionally been called Tumo breathing. Some people call it super oxygenation breathing, although then there are other people like Patrick McEwen and company that will say, well, you're actually blowing off more carbon dioxide than you are bringing in oxygen. And so the naming again now is a mess. Yoga so, Nidra breathe, breathing. So Yoga Nidra yeah. is exhale emphasized. Okay. But um, Tumo breathing, Wim Hof breathing, and super what sometimes is called super oxygenation breathing involves uh -huh. doing a lot of inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's hyperventilating. Uh -huh. It's deliberate hyperventilating. <laughs> yeah. and followed by exhales and breath holds. Mm -hmm. Followed by inhales and, and breath holds. Yeah. Now, the repetitive breathing more quickly and deeply, this kind of thing, <sighs> or some variant of that, all through the mouth or all through the nose, brings up the heart rate and causes the adrenal glands, which sit right above the kidneys, to secrete adrenaline. They make you more alert. And we know this, my lab's been looking at this with a number of different measures, exploring the nervous system and the periphery, like the heart rate, and you see these big inflections in heart rate when people do this. Typically, it makes people feel agitated at first. They feel a little bit agitated. And then when you exhale and hold your breath for 15 seconds or so, or longer in some cases, if somebody's skilled at this, what you're doing essentially is you're learning to be calm as your body is flooded with all this adrenaline and the heart rate is going. You're learning to calm your mind. That's right. So you're learning actually to separate the mind mm -hmm. body. Your body might be shaking, That's vibrating. Right. And you're learning to suppress that. And you're just... And that is 100% top-down control. Mm. What you're doing in those moments is you're learning to take your forebrain and say, fight the temptation to move. Fight the temptation to breathe. Now, I don't want to suggest anyone do this to the point where it's unsafe. You should never do this anywhere near water, even in a puddle, because people have drowned, people have died doing high oxygenation, breath packing type and of things. Passing out passing and passing out. Passing yeah. out, it's, it, is, it can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. So people need to take the appropriate precautions before they do it. If people have pulmonary issues, it can, there are, you know, it can be problematic. If people get trained in how to do it properly, mm -hmm. it can be relatively safe. Okay. And my lab has been doing experiments um, on a, now we have more than 100 people doing different types of breathing and exploring how it affects the mind and the body. This particular pattern of breathing, <sighs> 25 or 30 times followed by an exhale and a hold, and then a big inhale and a hold, sometimes doing more in mm -hmm. inhaling and exhaling type repetitive breathing. That is really somebody training themselves how to self-induce stress. And we know from some good literature mm. and some emerging science that's still ongoing, that it is possible to get comfortable in these agitated states so that your mind is okay, feels okay, when the body is feeling like it wants to tremble or move, that you can learn to suppress that activity. The ice bath is another good example of mm -hmm. this. Some people go straight to the ice bath because cold water will almost always induce a low level of stress in people. You have to you have to kind of fight it. Even if you learn to love it. You still have to every time jumping right. in there, okay, I gotta con right. control the mind essentially to that's calm. Right. Exactly, so the body is saying, this is really cold. 
<laughs> get this out. is really cold. Get, get out. out now. And you're pushing back on that and it's top-down control. Mm -hmm. It's pure top-down control. And you could do this any number of ways. There's actually a uh, something called the hour of pain, which is, um, <laughs> before you jump to conclusions, the, um, the hour of pain was actually described to me by a, a friend of mine, a uh, former military special operations guy, who said that you, they place you, this wasn't through military, but this is a kind of a, a outside the military Extracurricular Yeah, extracurricular activity. activities. <laughs> of placing you into one position on, uh, on the floor, and you have to stay there for an hour, which can be excruciating. There's so much limbic friction where you want to move so badly because the stabilizing muscles of the body and the feedback in our muscular skeletal system says, move, move, move. I just want to move the tiniest bit. And so all that practice is, it's just a different version of the ice bath. Yes. It's you're learning top-down control. 